Hello and welcome back to another Reality Check VR video. Today we're going to be making a quick little video with photogrammetry. It is uh, very popular right now, especially with destinations coming out on Steam VR. But I wanted to show you guys what I've played with here in the last few weeks. Um, I'm a, a noob when it comes to photogrammetry myself, but uh, I just wanted you to see that you could be a noob as well. Um, I'm on agisoft.com right now, and you actually have a 30-day free trial that you can click on and try out. With this program, you can basically take simple photos with your camera or even cell phone, um, and then put those together to create 3D models. And uh, they can be very high textured quality if you want them to be high resolution models. Um, so uh, very quickly, I just want to show you some of the random crappy models that I made while I was trying to learn the software um, before I had watched tutorials online. So it's better to watch some tutorials online. Okay, so the day that I downloaded this program, I had a very messy uh, dining room table, so I decided to just take photos of that. And as you can see, you know, we got the blurry pictures, unblurry pictures. I was just th throwing these with my cell phone. Um, those photos were taken with my cell phone very quickly, um, without any care or uh, rhyme or reason. And uh, when I threw those in the program, we'll see what happened. <laughs> yeah, I think this is the one without the. Yeah, here, here we go. Textured now. So you can see we recreated that little scene pretty much completely not entirely it's uh, it has a lot of work that needs to be done to it so you can see that even when I took really really crappy photos even when I took blurry photos crappy photos it still managed to make something that looked pretty cool here's pictures from a live events DJ show where we were setting up the desk and I just took some random photos once again with my cell phone without much rhyme or reason just trying to make sure I kind of covered the desk as much as possible um, and this one, once again, no optimization, um, no special work of any kind, and this one came up with, oh, here we go. Um, this one, I did not create a texture for it yet, so this is not a, this is not a textured mesh. This is just showing you uh, basically pre-check. Pre yeah, you can see how it's got that whole background where I didn't get the photos. Um, but you can see right there, you know, we've got a basic 3D kind of somewhat model. It is very bad compared to what we want it to be, um, but the idea is there. So let's move on again, all right? I took some pictures of an arcade, and we can see that this one right here turns into... Okay, so one thing I'll notice with the arcade right here is you've got all these little uh, blue images just like you had in the previous ones. If you click this camera button up here, you'll notice this is actually where they are assuming you are taking the photo. These are where the program is best guessing that photo was taken from in 3D space. Um, so you can click that off and it'll take that away. Um, what's really cool is you can actually you know zoom in here. Um, this one is not, like I said, optimized in any kind of sh way, shape, or form, but it still has the different things there. Um, and of course, if we go over here, we can actually see um, what the actual kind of mesh cloud looks like. Actually go into these, and you can delete them one by one individually. You know, And this is where your mesh, of course, is going to attach itself to. This brings us to the next part where uh, I, uh, yesterday, I actually took pictures of the old DK2 box. Sitting back there, a DK2 box. Yeah, anyway, um, yesterday I took pictures of that, and uh, we've got some footage of that that I'll show you. It's very simple. I just put it on the stand, I walked around and took a few pictures of it. Um, I did have problems when making the model, though. Um, because both of the sides are exactly the same, it couldn't figure out which side was which. Um, it had nothing to differentiate because I didn't take a, a series of the background properly. Um, as well as the back side is completely blank, so it didn't know what to do with that. It needs some kind of identifying markers somewhere, whether it's in the background or either on the object itself to kind of match itself to that scene. Um, so I need to definitely do better with that. Um, but we'll go ahead and take a look at that real quick.
Okay, so that video that you just saw, um, well, the picture is basically turned into this right here. Um, it is not a perfect model. As you can see, the texture over there is doing both of the sides at one time in the wrong spot, and that is just because of uh, some misalignment issues that I've had, and uh, this was just rendered very quickly. I wanted to do it within a few minutes, and I didn't want to redo it. Just to show you guys the basics, obviously, you can clean it up and make it look a lot better than what I've done right here. Um, but just being able to see the box right there, you know, this it looks very much like it does in real life. Um, and it's, you know, of course, it's an actual 3D box, although the top and the back are completely not there. It's so much easier to do these kind of things when you have light outside. So I took some pictures of a stump when I was running around, and I am very excited to show you guys how that one turned out. There's all the pictures that I took, so I'll show you right now. Um, I just found the stump, said, hey, I'm going to take some photos of you, and you can see I'm actually very washed out in some areas. You want to make sure to manually set your camera to not allow this kind of stuff to wash out. You want it to be the same kind of... Um, clarity in every single photo, you know, same same shadow, same everything. You don't want to move anything or change anything um, at all. And of course, like you know, th that photo right there, you're going to notice when I show you the model, you know, how the picture actually affects that. Um, but you can see these other photos are nice and crisp on this side where we've got the actual um, nice edges. And from this photo right there, all the way through, we've got 29 photos that we took right here. And with 29 photos, there is our photos that we took, the 29 photos that I walked around it and took from different angles. You can see them there. We'll turn them off. And uh, as we get close to it, you can see the detail. It's pretty awesome that it actually got in there. Um, and of course, we can go back to just the, the model, to the dense cloud, the colored dense cloud, back to the texture one again. There we go. Now it's textured. Yeah, the texture on the wood is so good looking. I mean, come on. Especially for, you know, considering this was being uh, taken with a cell phone camera. This one was not taken with a fancy camera by any means. Um, it was just your average cell camera. Just to show you guys now, after going into workflow and building a tiled model, you can, uh, <laughs> I hate saying that, tiled model, you can uh, go in here to export model, and then once you do that, you can make an FBX or whatever you prefer for the program that you're using. I put mine into an FBX, and I made it quite large just because I wanted to keep some of that uh, fidelity just for the demo here. And it's 59 megabytes. You're gonna wanna make it smaller for that, especially if you're using it in a project. Um, but then what I can do now is I can just open up Unity. Okay, now we've got Unity open and I'm ready. I've got my model added in there. We're gonna add some height to the camera here quick. Okay, now we're switching over to the Rift headset. And I just wanted to show you real quick um, what I can do is this model right here is you can easily put it into Unity. And you can see how it looks kind of weird right now. I've got the textures on kind of a rubbery metallic looking thing. You can make them look much more finer. Um, but I just basically wanted to show you um, how this thing looked in 3D space. So when I, you know, when I put it down right there, I can actually, you know, walk around and see this thing. And the kind of quality that it's got is just really, really impressive. Um, and of course, this one is the unfinished one. Oop. <laughs> no, I forgot. I, I forgot. I, I took the gravity off of that. Whoops. Um, this over here. Ah, I can reach and grab that for you. And this one's got, of course, its own interesting look to it. This is just a miniature version of that one right there. So I'll put it over here. Looks so nice. So anyway, I'm thinking I might like make like a little uh, miniature village and make it look really realistic, a little tiny miniature forest that you could then, you know, kind of play with and maybe set fire to things or I don't know, all, all kinds of fun stuff you could do with a miniature wooden forest. So anyway, we'll put that one inside of that one. No. <laughs> ah, ah. Ah, I've got the trees. That one behind me. So guys, I hope you think this is pretty cool. Um, just a few days ago, I saw this stump in real life. I took some photos of it with my cell phone, and now here I can basically put it in my living room, and I, of course, can <laughs> I can walk around it. As you can see, this thing is pretty cool looking. So, um, all right, I need to stop. I need to stop or I'll never stop. I'm gonna put it down on the ground about there, about yay high, about right, about right there. Okay, later stump, don't you move, don't you move. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Don't move. Okay? Sounds good to me, buddy. Bye.